Are you still with us? Thank you so much, Maraz. Zona Chandra Moli Maraz is the disciple of Shil Prabhupada, expert in preaching, especially the prison ministries and throughout the world. Maraz is preaching, Maraz is currently in India. So we'll be today hearing from Maraz the glories and important instructions from our line guru, Shil Bhakti Siddhanta, so Dr. Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Maraz. You can start. Magyan Timiranda Shyan Jana Jana Salakaya Chaksu and Nelitanya in that test, my Sri Gurveda Maha. The Mao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutalai Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Zeras Vati Deve Gaula Mani Pachari Ne Nevisha Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sikari Ne. The Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Bhutale Shri Mukti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Sri Varsha Banavi Devi Daite Kripa Daya Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daine Prabhavena Mahamadur Ojvala Prema Dyashi Rupa Nuga Bhakti Dhiva Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Govravani Sri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupa Nuga Virura Pasidanta Dvanta Harine Vaisi Krishna Chaitana Prabhupada Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasti Gora Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare From my obeisances to all the devotees in central Jersey Hare Krishna um, so today in America, they are honoring the disappearance day of one of the greatest of all acharyas in the line of authority of Vaishnava acharyas, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And um, the uh, uh, spiritual master of his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Um, but his life and his and what he offered to the world in terms of spiritual knowledge and many programs to develop for Chaitanya's uh, mission is quite voluminous. Um, His Holiness Bhakti um, <laughs> Bhakti Vikash Maharaj has written a three volume. Uh, a compendium of uh, all of the many of the activities of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. It comprises hundreds and hundreds of pages. Now we can try to take a little drop of that and turn it. First of all, we should understand, I think, the importance that the appearance of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati came at a very critical time in the history of Bodhi Vaishnava. Um, prior to that, his father, Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, was um, surrounded by a lot of um, challenges of the quality and the importance of Gaudi of Vaishnavism. Um, at that time, there was a gap of about 150 years from the time of Lord Chaitanya's last, some of his last disappearance uh, disciples, and there was a gap of 150 years before Bhakti Vinod Thakur started to get actively involved in reawakening Lord Chaitanya's teachings through books, periodicals, and traveling all over the Indian continent. Um, the 150 years uh, grew into a whole series of what we call Asampradayas, persons who claim to be followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but had no connection with the philosophy of the teaching. Surreptitiously or uh, artificially proclaiming to be followers, they had developed all kinds of 
bogus philosophies and teachings, and spirit, so-called spiritual practices that were uh, simply filled with different types of debauch material activities. And they were becoming quite prominent. And there's 13 sampradaya, uh, sampradayas as I mentioned. The Bhakti Vinod Thakur was uh, practically alone in his position as a uh, Gaudiya Vaishnava. He had come across the uh, teachings of Lord Chaitanya in, in 1832, and that changed his whole life before he was a Shakta. And then he started to write and develop. And then for years he was preaching um, Krishna consciousness as best he could, but he was practically a lone ranger. There was a few others, but hardly any real support. And then uh, in the year, around the year 1872-73, Bhakti Vinod Thakur at that time had become the magistrate in the Jagannath Temple. And he had established this house on Grand Road, which is the road by which Jagannath drives his chariot for the Ratha Yatra every year. At that time, he could understand that there is the word the Lord, the, the, unless the Lord really helps directly, there won't be any real change in the trend towards Sahajism and pretentiousness that was going on in the name of, of uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism or challenging Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And so he prayed. And uh, lo and behold, he found out in a very amazing way that the, his prayer was a hallowed prayer was answered. During the year uh, 1874, on February 6th, a child took birth in his family. It was his fifth son, and his he named his son Bhimala Prashad. But it was quite unusual. His birth was uh, quite interesting. The umbilical cord that connects the child with the mother was wrapped around the body of uh, little uh, Bhimala Prashad like a, like a Brahma Gayatri tree. And so everyone noticed that. Um, that was an indication that here is actually a great personality. The first indication came when uh, there was a Jagannath Rathi Yantra. When Otakor had been absent from Puri at that time, and the festival went on, the carts were driving down the road and they stopped right in the, of the house of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. At that time, his wife, Bhagavi Devi, took the opportunity to take little Bhimala Prashad and get, and get some blessings from Jagannath. So the cart got stuck, it didn't want to move and it stayed right in front of Bhakti, of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's home. And his wife came out, put the child at the feet of Lord Jagannath. And after a few minutes, uh, the huge garland from Lord Jagannath's body fell and circled around the child. And uh, his wife noted that, and she told her husband, and he can, from that he could understand. Here was the answer to the prayer. I had a great personality that I asked to come to help with is actually my son. So understanding that, he took very good care in bringing up his son and giving him the best teachings. And that really blossomed in his early years. When he was seven years old, he learned the entire Bhagavad Gita and could, could, could recite all the verses and also give explanations on the verses. As he grew, his father started to teach him in the, in the Nishringa Mantra. He also gave him a deity of Kormade for worship. And he, um, uh, he was excelling even as a young boy in his studies. It was one very important part of his life, which was in the early part, when Bhimala Prashad, Bhakti Siddhanta, was only four years old. He inadvertently took a mango from the deity room that was meant to be offered to the, the, the deities. And his father noted that and uh, mildly chastised him and said, you shouldn't have done that. It's, it's, 
than for the deities. The child took it very seriously and he took a vow that throughout his whole life he would never eat mangoes. And he kept that vow his entire life, despite the fact that many times his disciples would come and offer him various types of mango dishes. And he would say, I'm sorry, I cannot take. I mean, I'm an offender. So, of course, what can a four year old child uh, become offensive? But he showed by example how serious it was that to, uh, to make a vow. And he followed that his entire life. His growing up was in his uh, school years. He wouldn't spend much time in the classrooms. He would go to the libraries and read all the books on philosophy and study the various uh, religious scriptures. And he became expert in many different types of philosophies. And when he was in his... Uh, college years, he started one group called the August Assembly, which was a group that had, that were meant to take a lifetime vow of celibacy and simply become renunciates studying the scriptures. But it was only him that lasted in that particular assembly. <laughs> um, his, uh, his father was really seeing him grow into a amazing Vaishnava. He had such uh, intelligence, even at the age of nine years old, he created a type of shorthand called Bikranta. It's also called Bikanto. And uh, he established that and was used as a form of shorthand. He studied astronomy and astrology and he wrote Surya Siddhanta and many other he also started journals on, on astronomy and astrology. So he was he was absorbed in learning in different areas of knowledge as much as he could. But he was fixed in the whole science of bhakti. He was chanting japa and worshiping uh, Lord Shringadev by chanting the Shringadev mantras regularly. So um, as he grew up in school, they could see that he was an exceptional student. So they offered him a position in the college, but he refused, not wanting to get entangled with some material position. He simply wanted to preach and learn more and practice Krishna consciousness. Um, and of course, he started a few journals and different philosophical teachings. In the year 1900, at the age of 26, his father told him that, I think it's about time we now accept the spiritual master. And there have been one great Babaji who was coming regularly to Bhakti Vinota course lectures. He was always quite obscure. He would sit in the back and listen to Bhakti Vinota course, never say anything, and then he would leave. The Bhakti Vinota Kaur noted that this person was a great Vaishnava. So he pointed his son in that direction. He said, you should take initiation from him. He said, without taking initiation in, in uh, the goal of life, which is devotion to Krishna, one cannot, uh, one cannot achieve the purpose of human life. The purpose of human life is to uh, use this uh, human life to free oneself of the entanglements of material activities and material desires and to engage fully in service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When that becomes pe perfect, that is called the uh, Prema Pumarta Mahan or the Siro Mani, Siro Mani, or the highest goal in life, which is to develop one's natural love for the Supreme Lord in the form of loving service. And so uh, his father lectured him in the importance of taking a spiritual master and pointed him in that direction. So, but when he approached Gorky Short as Babaji Maharaj for initiation, he refused, saying that actually, you know, you are a great scholar and I can't even write my name. How can I become your spiritual master? And besides, I have no interest in that position. So look somewhere else. 
So he left, went back to his father. His father was very adamant. He told him, no, you must accept him. You must, he must accept you as his disciple. So go back. And if you don't go, if you don't uh, get him, then you cannot come back into the house again. So now he was so determined. And um, he was walking to meet his spiritual master, or Gorky Shorda Babaji at the time. And they met on a bridge. And he was told, he said, uh, the goal of life is to develop love for Krishna. And in order to do that, one must accept the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. So I have fixed my mind on you as my spiritual master. So please do an initiation. If you don't, then I will jump off of this bridge and end my life because I won't see any purpose of life without having a spiritual master. And so Gorky Shodas Babaji noted that very seriously and initiated him. And he received the name Sri Barshabanadi Devi Dalitaya, which is a name for Srimati Radharani. <laughs> and then uh, now being initiated, he started to preach in different areas. In 1911, in Bindapur, there was a great assembly of Vaishnavas and smarter brothers coming together to discuss various philosophical teachings. And one of the topics is what is who is greater, the Brahmins or the Vaishnavas? The Bhakti Vinoda Kora was meant to uh, represent the Vaishnavas in that assembly. But he came down with rheumatic fever and wasn't able to come. The Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati had studied the whole topic and had written about it also. So he presented that writing to his father. Father could understand here's the perfect person to go. And he went. And of course, as described, when he was speaking, he was asked to speak first. And he started to glorify the Brahmanas explaining that one who is born in a Brahmin family is, in, is the leader of society. There's no better birth than a Brahmin. But and the Brahmins were feeling somewhat happy and inspired by his lecture. But then at one point, he said, but if one doesn't take up devotional service to the Supreme Lord, one doesn't become a Vaishnava, then birth in a Brahmin family is useless. And then he went on to quote different scriptural statements saying that even if a person is born in a low, lower family outside of a Brahmin, if he takes up devotional service, he's even better than the Brahmin. He can deliver the Brahmins. And so his speech was so convincing, so expert, so full of Shastric knowledge that um, the Brahmins couldn't say anything. And then the assembly persons who were organized glorified him. And then all the people who were there to listen to the lecture ran towards him to touch his feet. And I see that this was a great personality. The person who organized it called him the second Sugadeva Goswami. So these are some of the early activities of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. As time went on his spiritual master left the world and then of course his father also left the world and then he was practically alone he was feeling somewhat abandoned and now he had to somehow or other push back the influence of these awesome for claiming to be allegiance to lord chaitanya but had no connection with sri chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy or lifestyle and uh so he was praying. So he went to sleep one night, and in the dream, Panchatattva appeared to him. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vas, they all appeared to him in the dream and said, we are with you. You preach Krishna consciousness, we are with you. And he took heart to that, and then he began his preaching more and more. And gradually he met different people, and then he was received, received a building, which was the first Gaudiamath building, one Utadalton Junction Road, which is now under the care of uh, ISKCON. After so many years, we got that building. It was the first Gaudiamath. It's the place where Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada met Bhakti Siddhanta 
1922, where he received that famous statement, that famous instruction, you were a very intelligent person. You should take Lord Chaitanya's teachings to the Western world. And that was the seed that was planted that eventually grew into the entire Iskand society. Mm -hmm. Srila Prabhupada at that time was a grihasta. He was a businessman, family. He had a, a lot of responsibilities, but he kept that, that, that message within his heart and mind. And for many years, he tried to carry it out. And finally, and of course, we know it wasn't until 1965 that Srila Prabhupada actually began his mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. And it was inspired by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So he is actually Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was the vanguard by which Krishna consciousness spread around the world. It was Bhakti Vinoda Kaur who had the vision one day when he was looking out in the area of Lord Chaitanya's birthplace, he saw a vision. It was like a mystical experience of people chanting and dancing and calling out Jai Sanchi Nandana, Jai Sanchi Nandana. Upon watching this vision, he saw that the people were not just only from India, but from all races around the world. Then he could understand that a great soul would someday appear and take Lord Chaitanya's mission uh, around the world. So this is all prophesied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta is a major link in bringing all of this about as he uh, inspired uh, the preaching all around the world. He also wrote many books. He wrote 61 different books, periodicals, and started different journals. And the Sarjana Toshini, which was started by his father, Bhakti Vinoda, who later became the harmonist, and many other uh, newspapers. He was challenged at the time. Um, there he was, many of these ups, up or dyes were becoming threatened. And Bhakti Siddhanta was known as the lion guru. And his lion like nature was that he could not tolerate pretentious. Uh, uh, persons who were claiming to be Vaishnavas or even Mayavadis. Sometimes he would see a Mayavadi walking down the street. He would go right up to him and grab him and shake him and chastise him. <laughs> After a while, the Mayavadis became much of frightened. And then when they would see him coming, they would go the other way. But his reputation of being a staunch Vaishnava writing books, preaching, and then, of course, many people came under his shelter, and the Gaudiya Math grew uh, like leaps and bounds. He was opening temples. He was uh, distributing large amounts of prasadam to thousands and thousands of people at various types of festivals. Prasadam distribution was one of his biggest preaching. Sometimes they would gather 20,000 people and feed 20,000 people, all the donations that they would collect, he would use for preaching and for food, food distribution. And after some time, he initiated many persons into the sannyas order. And he created an army of 60 sannyasis who were preaching all over India. And uh, uh, his reputation was becoming more and more, what we say, powerful. And therefore threatening. Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada says, you know when your preaching is becoming effective when you're getting opposition. <laughs> this is an indication that you are, your preaching is becoming effective when you receive opposition. So one should not consider opposition as something negative. It's an indication that those, because the world works in a different way, the world, yeah, and even people in religious organizations, they don't really want to give up everything material and work. They want to combine spirituality with some forms of spirituality with material activities and call that uh, success in spiritual life. That's very popular. Mayavadism and um, what we call... Um, religious 
sentiments where people practice religion in order to further their material life, to get a good family, to get a good position, become wealthy, become uh, famous and powerful. Uh, they think, well, if I worship God, I can achieve these things. But this is not real religion. This, this is a merchant. It's like you go to the store and you buy something from a merchant, you give some money and the merchant gives you the item you asked for. So what is your relationship with the merchant is the exchange. So people want to uh, worship the Lord by offering prayers, asking for material benedictions and going to church and giving some charity, going to the temple and thinking that is sufficient. And therefore, if everything works out materially, that's an indication that God is pleased with me. But Sheila Prabhupada said in his lecture, if God is pleased with you, he gives you everything material. And if he's really pleased with you, he takes everything away. And people don't like that. It's not a famous statement that people have become enthusiastic about because the world works in such a way as people still see material successes as a, a very important part of life, even if they practice spiritual life. Bhakti Siddhanta cut through all of that, and he was, he was preaching very strongly. Uh, the importance of developing attachment for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission uh, of uh, Harinam Sankirtan. And along with his devotees, he traveled all over the Indian continent, establishing what is called Parapitas, uh, the transcendental footprints of Lord Chaitanya. He made into a mold and placed it in 29 different places all over India. And you can go to those many of those places today and still find those footprints placed by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Now, his, his whole mission, his whole mood was to teach Lord Chaitanya's principle of Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga and also the process of Harinam Sankirtan. And between these two things, he established Lord Chaitanya's preaching and then through various other programs also. Um, um, his preaching was becoming very powerful, and therefore, one group called the Nityananda Vamsas, who claimed the Lord Nid as being uh, descendants of Lord Nityananda, they were pretentious Asampradaya. They came to the police office and says, um, My dear police officer, here is 25,000 rupees. Now you can imagine how much that was in those days. We will give you 25,000. Rupees. We want to uh, eliminate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Please do not do anything. Uh, the police officer, the police chief, he was actually, he said, We are accustomed to take such things, but not for a saintly person. I cannot accept it. And then he left and he told Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Take care, there's some men who are out to destroy you. And uh, and of course, um, he was protected after that, and, uh, and, he, and he continued his preaching. Although there was so much opposition from the smart Brahmanas, from the Asampradayas, and for people in general who considered his movement to be something artificial. Uh, but he was determined. So what I'll do now, is I'll read some of his uh, instructions that he gave as his uh, tenets for teaching Krishna consciousness. These are like aphorisms. Uh, there's a series of 24 of them, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll mention some of them, and I'll also maybe comment on a few of them. This is called Upadei Savali. Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. The first one he says, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Supreme victory for the congregational chanting of Krishna's name. This is the Sri Gaudi Mas sole object of worship. So here is he establishing that Sri Krishna Sankirtan is the main object 
a focus for the Gaudiya Math to spread Sri Krishna Sankirtan everywhere. Second one, Sri Krishna, who is the Visaya Vigraha, or the object of the devotee's love, is the sole enjoyer, and all others are meant to be enjoyed by him. So he established that Krishna is the complete object of the devotee's focus, the lovable object, and he is the only enjoyer. And each, what is that verse? There is uh, the Krishna Asabrita, Ishwar Parma Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karma Karanam. Uh, Krishna is the only object of enjoyment. He is the only enjoyer, and everyone is meant to be enjoyed by him. Of course, some people think, well, what does that mean for me? That means that if you give yourself to be enjoyed by Krishna, you become unlimitedly happy. Because we are part and parcels of Krishna, we are always connected with Krishna, whether we are aware of it or not. By serving Krishna, by worshiping Krishna, and by pleasing Krishna, when Krishna becomes pleased or satisfied with our devotion, he blesses the devotee in different ways. And then the devotee life becomes perfect. The devotee achieves transcendental knowledge and unlimited happiness. Number three, those who don't perform parivajan are ignorant and murderers of their own soul. Very strong statement. Hari Bhajan, or Dorothy Krishna, or Sri Hari Krishna, is, um, is the focus of everyone. And those who don't do that and do not take up Hari Bhajan, uh, they are they're destroying their own existence. Number four, the accepting the acceptance of Harinam and direct realization of Bhagavan are one and the same. So you see how many statements all connected with Harinam and glorification of the Lord. These are his main tenets. Number five, those who equate the demigods with Vishnu are unable to serve Bhagavan. So we know demigod worship is quite powerful, especially on the Indian continent and amongst those who were brought up in that culture. What here it says, those who put the demigods on the same level as the Supreme Lord, that's mentioned as one of the offenses to the Holy Name, and they are unable to serve the Supreme Lord properly. Number six, establishing a printing press to print devotional books and preaching by organizing Namhata programs constitutes general, genuine service to Sri Mayapur. So, of course, we know our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, was told by his spiritual master, if you ever get money, print books. He said, this is the big Murdanga. The sound of the Murdanga can be heard within a certain range, but the printing press these books can go anywhere and everywhere. We have the example of how just one Bhagavad Gita that came into Russia became the foundation of the unfolding of one of the biggest yatras outside of India, the Russian yatra, simply by that Bhagavad Gita book that came into, uh, came into Russia. So yeah, these books can go anywhere and everywhere. And they are the, the big Murdanga. The sound of transcendental knowledge can be heard everywhere. Number seven, we are not doers of good or bad deeds, nor are we scholars or illiterate. Carrying the shoes of Hari, pure devotees is our duty. We are initiated into the mantra Kirtaniya Sadarahi. So here's a statement of humility. We are humble servants of the Lord, and we are absorbed in chanting the Lord's name and humble service to the Vaishnava. Number eight, preaching without following proper conduct falls within the category of karma. 
mundane activity. Without criticizing the nature of others, one should correct oneself. This is my personal instruction. Without criticizing the nature of others, one should correct oneself. So here he gives the clear understanding of a Vaishnava's con con conduct, doesn't find fault with others, and he's always trying to improve his own character by making corrections in his own in his own nature, in his own activities. He says, this is my personal instruction. So he put emphasis on that one. Serving the Vajabhasis who feel great separation from Krishna when they left Raja to reside in Mathura is our supreme constitutional activation. So echoing Lord Chaitanya's teachings of service and separation, he teaches, he's mentioning this service and separation to the Brajabhasis. Number 10, if we desire to follow an auspicious course in life, then disregarding the theories of even countless people, we should hear instructions only from a transcendental source. So what is, if we hear instructions from the, a transcendental source, that means the pure devotee, and from the Lord himself, what is the value of any other ideas or theories or instructions? Everything is there coming from the perfect source. Number 11 is interesting. Life as an animal, bird, insect, or any other of the other countless thousands of species is acceptable. But taking shelter of deceit is thoroughly improp improper. Only an honest person possesses real auspiciousness. Mm. Deceit is one of those bad characters that causes one to uh, position oneself in such a way as to want to cheat others in order to further one's own selfish interests. Therefore, he says, honesty is real auspicious. Number 12, simple heartedness is synonymous with Vaishnavism. Servants of Paramahansa Vaishnava should be simple hearted, a quality which makes them the topmost Brahman. So here, simple hearted means you see what you see is what you get. Devotees are not hiding behind some kind of facade or trying to present themselves in a way that is different. They are simple hearted and they simply want to serve the Lord and serve the Vaishnava. Number 13, helping to draw conditioned souls away from their perverted attachment to this material energy is the greatest compassion. Even if one soul is rescued from Mahamaya's fortress, that compassionate act is infinitely more benefit, benevolent than the construction of unlimited hospitals. Interesting. Saving one soul from the, the clutches of Maya and bringing them to the devotional service is much more beneficial than all of the welfare work one can do in the material world. Number 14, there are 24 of these all together. We're at number 14. We have not come to this world to be construction workers. We are the bearers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. In other words, we're not coming here simply to build temples. We come as <laughs> bearers of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Number 15, we will not remain in this world for long. And by profusely performing Hari Kirtan, upon relinquishing these material bodies, we will experience the ultimate reward of embodied life. Again, he goes back to the importance of chanting the holy names of the Lord. The devotees need to develop a taste for and become regulated at performing Harinam Sankirtan, which is the Yuga Dharma in this age. 16, the foot dust of Srila Rupa Goswami, the filler of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's inner desire 
is our life soul's desired object. The Rupa Goswami is special. We are followers of Rupa Goswami. He is called the Prayojan, and I'm sorry, he is called the Abhideya Acharya. He teaches the process of pure devotional service, and he is completely fixed on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in spreading Krishna consciousness. Number 17, this one is a little lengthy. If I were to desist from lecturing about the absolute truth, being fearful that some listeners may be displeased, I will be deviating from the path of Vedic truth and accepting the path of untruth. I would become one who is inimical to the Vedas and atheists and would no longer possess faith in Bhagavan, the very embodiment of truth. Hmm. So here, and this illustrates his character. Even if people become a little displeased, sometimes we have to speak the truth. Of course, we speak the truth in, in a pleasing way, but even then, people, when uh, there's one country in the world, I won't mention the place, but devotees who have been preaching there would say that if they're giving a lecture in any of the places in that country, if they start talking about the four regulative principles, people will immediately get up from their seats and leave the lecture. They don't want to hear about these restrictions. They're interested in, in what is called uh, the philosophy and the activities, but not the restrictions. So, uh, but sometimes we have to say, you know, that no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. It may hurt the uh, sentiments of some people, and they may also turn away, but uh, we cannot compromise in order to patronize someone's um, feelings. Number 18, Krishna's darshan can only be attained through the medium of the ear. As one hears Harikatha from pure Vaishnavas, there is no other way. So here he glorifies the importance of hearing Harikatha. And then he illustrates that in the next one, wherever Harikatha is being spoken, it is a holy place. Uh, we have publicized one book called Holy Jail. We're preaching in jail. So we call that holy jail. That means wherever, even if it's, if Harikatha is spoken by in jail, that is a desirable place because Harikatha is the essence of uh, the practice of Krishna consciousness. Hari Kirtan, Harikatha, Hari Puja. Number 20, proper hearing is accomplished through the medium of Kirtan. And this will give one the good opportunity to practice remembrance. The internal experience of rendering direct service to the Astakalya Lila, Sri Radha Krishna's pastimes in each of the, of the eight parts of the day becomes possible. So that's the Astakalya where there is mentioned that in eight different parts of the day, Radha Krishna performs various different pastimes according to the clock. And that's a nice experience. There is one book put out by Shiva Ram Maharaj and that describes these, um, these pastimes of the Lord in these different parts of the day, along with um, the Astakalya Lila of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who performs also in the eight parts of the day. Number 21, we should understand that loud calling of Krishna's names is bhakti. Now, according to Prabhupada says, when you chant loudly, you, you drive away inertia, inattention, ghosts, and various types of undesirable creatures run when the, of the loud chanting of Krishna's name. Bhagavan, number 22, will not accept anything that is offered by a person who doesn't chant 100,000 times daily. In other words, one lack of name, which is 64 
64 rounds of japa. We won't comment on that too much because Srila Prabhupada has given us 16 as the standard. But this was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He made it very strict that anyone who lives in the moth, that's not for the preachers who are going out to preach every day, but everyone who was staying in the moth must chant 100,000 names of Krishna every day. And one who doesn't do that, they try to offer anything to the Lord, the Lord will not accept. He had said, of course, the Acharyas accept a certain standard, so he accepted that standard. And Prabhupada has accepted another mm -hmm. standard. So if we follow the first Srila Prabhupada standard, then we are fine. Number 23, by sincerely endeavoring to chant Harinam without offenses and remaining fixed in chanting constantly, one's offenses will fade and pure Harinam will arise on the tongue. This is very important for the devotees to understand that we should never give up the chanting. We should try to work on it, perfect it, even if it's a struggle, even if there's no taste, continue to chant and try to avoid the offenses in due course of time. Pure, the pure Nam name will appear on the tongue of the devotee. And the last one, number 24, which is quite long, as mundane thoughts arise while taking Hari Nam, one should not become discouraged. A secondary consequence of taking Hari Nam is that these useless mundane thoughts will gradually dissipate. Therefore, one should not worry about this. By dedicating one's mind, body, and words to serving Sri Nam and continue to chant with great persistence, Sri Nam will grant one darshan of his supremely auspicious transcendental form. And by continuing to chant until one's anarthas are fully eradicated by the power of Sri Nam realization, one achieves the realization of form, quality, and pastimes of the Lord. These will automatically arise. So here he kind of sums everything up by saying, just take Sri Nam and continue to chant and purify your existence. And gradually Krishna will reveal himself in his different forms, qualities, pastimes, and transcendental names. So these are, this is called, I just read called Upadesh Savali. These are 24 statements of principles that Bhakti Siddhanta enunciated in his preaching and his teachings also. So we'll stop there and we'll uh, open it up for questions. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Dear devotees, anyone has any questions? You can raise your hand. We want to give first a uh, choice for questions for the devotees at Central Jersey. There are many other devotees that are here online also. We take, we'll take the questions coming from the devotees in Central Jersey first. Okay, go ahead. The devotees, anyone has questions? Raise your hand and you can unmute yourself. Go ahead, Amritan Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance, all Gurish to Srila Prabhupada. Very nice to see and hear you again, Maharaj. Maharaj, my question is that when we listen to Katha, when we, like as you gave a nice description of uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, it's very interesting and very inspiring. But this inspiration, Maharaj, doesn't carry through so that you know, there's no sustainability in that inspiration. And maybe after a day or two, it's back to normal. So what can we do to, to somehow make this go deeper rather than just at an intellectual level or a feel-good level? I think that was covered by Bhakti Siddhanta in, in his statements of and one has to take association and engage in glorifying, glorifying the Lord in the association of devotees. 
Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Saru Sreshti Hoi. Lava Magda Saru Sangha, Saru Siddhi Hoi. Associating with devotees and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one can become fully purified through that process. But it's a sustained process, it's something that we approach and then we enter into and we develop, we develop a taste for it and we continue. And then it becomes a, a feature of our uh, regular life. We look forward to that, and we even the plan to take part in, to, in it more and more, because that's where the taste of Krishna consciousness comes. Hearing and chanting in association with devotees, whether it's Krishna Katha or Krishna, Krishna Kirtan, Krishna is the center, the devotees are together hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And there's another verse that illustrates that in the Bhagavatam. Satam prasangam mama virya samvido avanti ritkarna rasayana kata. And that in the association of devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is nectar, rasayana, nectar, kata, or ritkarna. Rit means heart and karna refers to ear. So that nectar pours into the heart and, and inspires the ear to want to hear more and more and the heart becomes happy. So this is our process. But if we don't take it regularly, then the, the power of the material energy has a tendency to overshadow our determination of service. And that means, as you say, we're back to normal again. We're back to the mundane mood again. Yeah, but you you you. Does, does that make sense? Yes, yes Maharaj, if I may be permitted a follow up. So, even after years of association and listening to Katha on a daily basis, that taste is more or less sporadic. There's no constancy. So sometimes it comes, sometimes it's not there. And that kind of becomes frustrating. And it seems that just the initiation vows keeps on going. <laughs> yeah, that means there's still, there's still some anarchas there that we have to work on. Some material attachments that are blocking our our, our taste in, in Krishna consciousness. And it becomes sporadic. And, and on the platform of Nishta, the devotee becomes fixed and they're determined. Prior to that stage is an art and nivriti where one has to, under the, under the guidance of the spiritual master's instruction, and in the association of devotees, one has to um, recognize what, are, what, is the, what is blocking me in my Krishna consciousness. Is it some mindset that is wrong? Is it some material attachments that I'm still chasing after? Is it um, uh, offenses to the Vaishnavas? What is that? What is blocking that? And then one should uproot that with the power of one's devotional service and with the intelligence coming from uh, scripture and guru. So one has to um, diligently, it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and as the bhakti creeper grows, weeds also go up alongside of the people. And these weeds are, can store us. Uh, Choke out the, the actual bhakti creeper. These weeds are described in, in different ways. There's, I think there's five or six that are mentioned in this one purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think it's uh, Madhya Lila chapter 19, um, verse 159, I think it is. And then there it describes these uh, in Arthas. But there are many. 
uh, attachments that we can that can cause us to become lukewarm in our practice of devotional service or even stumble. So the whole process of bhakti is is a process of moving forward. But bhakti vinoda course is the easy and most effective way of destroying all anartha is have is Harinam Sankritan. He says this is destroys the anarthas right from the root. Chanting and dancing in association with devotees, taking Krishna Prasham, and hearing and discussing the pastimes and the glories of the Lord, worshiping the Lord in his deity form, all of these will become the uh, source of great happiness. So that's available. One might think, well, a material situation where I have family or responsibility. But that doesn't mean one anyone can everyone can achieve the perfection and follow the process seriously. Especially Hari Nam and service to the Vaishnav. But it has to be regular. It can't be intermediate. It can, can be just when we have time. Mm. It has to be a regular part of our daily activity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I remember coming to your house many years ago. We miss you, Maharaj. We miss you. Yes. If you're coming beside, please. We love like you. Long, long time. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. I plan to come to the U.S. this next year, so I will definitely come to that area of the world and revive some of my old friendships. <laughs> Blessed, Maharaj. We are blessed. Sachi Rani is also sending her Danvats, Maharaj. She recently got initiated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Any other questions? Anyone else has? Looks like no other questions. I guess we can take questions from the, the general audience and from everybody. No more from your area. Yeah, go ahead. Anyone else has questions? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Krishna. Please accept my humble offense. It says, All glories to Shira Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness, and all glories to assembled devotees. Um, I. I have a question about the teaching of uh, these two holiness, uh, Srila Prabhupada and uh, Bhakti Siddhanta. Is it different uh, teaching between them? No, not different teaching. But the application of the process of bhakti is, uh, will be a slightly different according to time, place, and circumstance. So Bhakti, Bhakti Sudanta Saraswati was preaching primarily in India. Prabhupada was preaching all over the world. So the application is slightly different, but the, 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 the principles, the tenets that we follow are the same. Okay. Uh, I have heard uh, about the temple that he has uh, opened many, many temples in India. And even Shri Prabhupada, even he has opened many, many temples in India. But uh, I have heard that they don't go to each other's uh, temple. Is this true? I don't really know. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. That's about it, Maharaj, I think. 
Anyone else? Uh, we have quite a lot of people online here. We got 39 participants here. Mm -hmm. Of course, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's disappearance celebration is um, is tomorrow here in India and, and in Europe also. So Europe and India will be celebrating tomorrow. Would do do I have your permission to read his book also? Is oh, it yeah. okay to read his book? Yeah. Thank you. You, you know, well, um, I'll talk to you that about that at another time. I don't think this is a time for discussing this. Okay. This Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, this is Susanna. Uh, um, I would like to ask about uh, what you uh, um, read out loud, uh, that without proper uh, um, instruction, uh, if one distributes books, uh, it can be uh, karmic, it can uh, attain karmic reactions or karmic, um, I'm not sure whether I understood it well or not. And can you please elaborate on this one, please? Uh, let me see what, I have to go back to that list again and see which one you're referring to. Uh, what does it say? I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Um, I don't remember the exact verse, but as I remember, it was like, uh, it sounded like um, without, not proper instruction, but proper, um, I can't find the word, <laughs> sorry, proper, uh, I was foolish enough not to remember the number itself. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, here, okay. It says preaching without following preaching. proper conduct. Thank you. Conduct. Within, Thank you. Conduct falls within the category of karma, mundane activities. Without criticizing the nature of others, one should correct oneself. This is my personal instruction. So, um, yeah, this is... Um, Nathan Goswami glorified Haridas Thakur. He said, some people preach, but their behavior is not very uh, proper. And other people, the behavior is very proper, but they don't preach. Mm -hmm. But then not to glorify Srila Haridas Thakur, that you are both a preacher and your behavior is ideal. So that is what we're being taught, that we should also conduct ourselves according to proper Vaishnava etiquette and behavior. And at the same time, um, go on with our devotional service. If we if we don't follow proper conduct, and then we will be preaching in the wrong way. We will um, our words will not have effect, and at the same time, we will be giving people wrong information that this behavior is acceptable. So one should learn the etiquette. So there is a whole series of uh, discussions and tenets and expl explanations on Vaishnava etiquette. Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of the devotee. Proper behavior, proper conduct. Um, there's books, Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj has written and spoke about that extensively. 
Uh, Satsarup Maharaj has also written a book on that. So, and there's, of course, throughout the scriptures, you'll find different elements of uh, statements uh, aligning etiquette with devotional activity. So it's important. Otherwise, our devotional activity will be more like mundane activity. So is it, um, it results in uh, karmic reactions if we don't preach properly, right? Uh, it just says, it, it didn't say karmic reaction, it just, it's not devotional service, it's mundane activity. That's all. It's mundane activity, it's karma instead of bhakti. And we don't represent obviously, um, the culture itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. and and we don't represent them the, um, the movement nicely if we um, yeah, we don't um, preach nicely yeah all we have to do is we practice humility humility is the foundation for proper conduct mm -hmm. yeah sure thank you Hare Krishna Hare thank you Maharaj Anyone, anyone else? If not, we'll conclude today session with announcements. Looks like Rajesh Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, your question, Devotee, sorry for not going on, on video. Um, just wanted to say thank you, Maharaj. I, there's so much uh, amazing points I never knew about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Swami. Um, can I also ask one, one question? Um, I think Maharaj, you mentioned Bhakti um, Siddhanta Saraswati Swami. He he went around and around. One of one of the legacies was leaving. Was it twenty four imprints of the footprints of? Was it Mahaprabhu? Yeah. In, in various places, are those spread all over um, all over India or yeah. in particular area parts? It was all the way down to South India. It was in the Tree Vendam Temple. You'll see. I've seen it myself, Lord Chaitanya's footprints encased in these uh, kind of like resin type of uh, blocks. Um, you'll see it, yeah. Mm -hmm. In South India, I saw one, one uh, set of footprints. Yeah. But he did it in 29 places. 29, right. And... And was it uh, was it from a central place that um, he obtained the initial mold? Or I don't know. That's not mentioned anywhere that I know. Of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. It's mm -hmm. so uh, amazing to to, to 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 sort of know that now. Uh, when I return to the dams and, and travel, it's something I'll try and look out for. We also, when I was in uh, Hungary, New Raja Dam, there's a, there's a footprint of Krishna encased in the same way. And say it's Krishna's footprint. So, of course, I don't know the origin of it, but it's there. You can see it. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I guess Krishna Nam and Anda Prabhu, I think we. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much. Was, yeah, nice to see you again. I hope oh. everything is going well in central Jersey. Yes, Maras. We'll see you next year here in person. So please come yeah, on. I have, to, I have to come in. See some of my friends there who will, I haven't seen in quite a while. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you, Maras. Fantastic, but the best of the past and 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 the best of the past. Thank you, Maras. Yeah. Okay, now, friends, today being the Shri Bhakti Dance of Talk of Stirabhav, fasting till noon. We have a Sunday Peace program. Please join today evening, 5.30 onwards with Tulsi Arthi Prakar Arthi. Next Monday is Sapala Ekadasi and January 2nd is Uttarada Ekadasi, very, very important Ekadasi, Vaikunta Ekadasi, also called. And December 25th is Christmas Day and is also Srila Jeeva Goswami's Disappearance Day. So these are the next upcoming you know, important dates. And we are in the Gita Jayanti Marathon. Please distribute as many books as uh, you can. So if you want books, please pick up the books from the temple and distribute. Give as gifts if you can, as a Christmas gift or year-end gift if you are giving to someone. Please choose Bhagavad Gita, one of the books Shri Prabhupada written. So that will be the wonderful way to help others. So those are the quick announcements. Govindas, if you want to order anything as a catering or uh, daily orders, you can order govindasmj.com is the website. You can place your orders online. Thank you very much. We will conclude today's session. Thank you for your association and time. Andras, Srimat, no. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Thirubhavam Hamaat Sokhi Jai, Shri Prabhupada Jai. 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 Jai.